Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to call an API using an HTTP GET request in a Flutter app. So first off, you're just going to want to import this HTTP package inside your pubspec.yaml file under dependencies. Once that's done, you're going to want to go ahead and update your Android manifest. So you're just going to navigate that under the Android folder, then app, then source main and there's the android manifest just down the bottom there cool so if i go in there i want to um, add a user's permission and i want to add the user's permission so that it can connect to the internet because without that i won't be able to make my request to the api Cool, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and head over to my main.dart file. The main.dart file is basically where all my Flutter code exists. And so if I go there, then you can sort of see that I've got the app and then I've got this page, my homepage state, which has this counter that you can sort of see on this iPhone screen there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove that counter. I don't want the counter inside my application um, because I'm just going to be making a GET request. Um, and I'm also going to want to go ahead and remove that button. So if I scroll down a bit further to this um, part here, you can see that there's a, a red line underscore count under counter. And that's because I've removed that counter reference. So I'm going to want to go ahead and update that text there. So I'm just going to update it to zero for now. And there's also this button here that I'm not going to want, so I'm going to remove that. While I'm here, I'll just update this text to say no counter, and I'm just going to run my application so that you can sort of see what it looks like with some changes to it. If you're familiar with um, Dart and Flutter, this is probably very basic so far. If not, um, I believe there is some courses on exorcism. Um, I'll link that in the description below. It's basically free exercises so that you can learn Dart um, and they'll just sort of help you understand what's going on here. Cool, so you can see on screen that I've got this no counter text and now I'm gonna want to go ahead and import my HTTP package. That's just in that um, package documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and send you the link for that. And I'm going to create a class catfact. So this catfact is basically going to represent the data I get back from the API. So it's going to have a fact. And it's also going to have a length, which is basically the length of the fact. So that fact um, length is going to be an integer. Then I'm also going to create a constructor, which basically has two required parameters, fact and length. And I'm also going to want to create a factory method, which is going to convert from the um, JSON and into a cat fact. So I'm just going to call this cat fact dot from JSON, and I'm going to pass in the JSON, which is just a map of string to dynamic values. The string representing the properties of the JSON. Okay, so now that I have that, I am going to go ahead and return my cat fact and pass in the necessary properties. So I'm going to want to pass my fact, which I can access through the JSON property fact. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for length.
Cool, so now that we have our cat fact, I'm going to want to go ahead and add a function in here inside my home page date. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make my API call and return a future, which is cat fact. So a future is basically um, the result of an asynchronous call that can either be completed or uncompleted and have data associated with it, which will be the cat fact in this case. So my method is called fetch cat fact. And I'm going to get the response from the HTTP request. So I'm just going to go to HTTP.get and then pass my URL in for my cat fact API. This is um, from the internet, so you can just Google free APIs to call. Just This is one example one, and my code's going to be on GitHub, so you can check it out there. So if I paste in that URL, then what I'm wanting to do is... For the response, I'm just going to want to go ahead and check the result of it. So I'm going to check the result of the response for its status code. And if it's 200, that means it's been successful. And I'm going to want to return the cat fact. So when this is hit, um, basically what's going to happen is the um, future is going to have a completed status and you'll be able to access the cat fact data. I'm going to call this cat fact dot from JSON and I'm going to use the response body. So you can see JSON decode's got a red line underneath it. That's just because I need to import this Dart convert library. So I've just imported that. If it's not status code of 200, then it means there's been some sort of error. So what I'm going to want to go ahead and do is I'm just going to throw an exception with what the error is. You could handle this in different ways, however you want. Um, probably a message on screen would be better. But for the purposes of this demo, it's not really what I'm trying to show you. Cool, so I'm returning my future, but I'm not setting it anywhere, and I want to be able to have my future set and access it from my um, where I build my UI. So I've got this um, field here that I'm creating that's going to be my future cat fact. And on a knit of this my homepage state, just going to override that function. All I'm going to do is call the super dot init state, and then I'm going to go ahead and call my um, future cat fact function. So yeah, I'll go ahead and fetch that um, cat fact and assign it to future cat fact. And it's basically go, going to go ahead and do the loading for me. So what I'm going to need to do next is I'm going to have to put in some UI to display the result on screen. And if the result hasn't quite loaded yet, I'm going to want to show some sort of spinner. So to do that, you can actually use this component called a future builder. So if I go and get rid of these children components, because I'm wanting to change what's showing inside my um, inside my Flutter app, I'm going to use the future builder. You want to specify what your actual future is that you're going to be using. In this case, it's my future cat fact. And then you're going to want to 
provide a builder which basically will return the different components that you want to display depending on what's happening. So this is basically going to be um, re-executed if the snapshot changes and the snapshot is just referring to the future that you've specified. So if the snapshot has data, then I'm going to want to return a text widget with the fact in it. So the snapshot.data.fact. I also want to check if the snapshot has an error. If it, do, it does, I'm just going to return an error on screen. And finally, if it doesn't have a data, have data or doesn't have an error, then I'm going to want to return a circular um, progress indicator, which will basically just spin to show the user that something's happening, just provide a good user experience. So now I've got all that code running, that's pretty much all I need. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and run that code. When that loads, you can see the spinner and then the cat fact shows. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub for you.